Hello and welcome to another Kangaroo English Daily Digest. My name is Christian and today is Monday, the best day of the week. Um, I'm going to continue to talk about pronunciation for one more day and then tomorrow I'm going to start talking about some other different things, okay, related to language. But I wanted to start today, because today's Monday, I wanted to start by telling a joke. Okay, so, um, a lawyer and a carpenter and a janitor, they go on a camping trip together. Okay, so a lawyer, you know what that is, right? A carpenter, carpenter makes things out of wood. And a janitor, a janitor is a person who, um, they're responsible for like maintenance of buildings. Normally maintenance of apartment blocks or schools, things like that, okay? Like maintenance man, your hand, local handyman, okay? Um, so yeah, they go on a camping trip and they find a magic lamp. <laughs> And so they rub the magic lamp and pff, a genie appears. And the genie says, I will give you whatever you want if you do the job of another person for one day. Choose the job and, and that's it. So the lawyer says, okay, I'm going to teach at kindergarten. I'm going to teach little children. That's easy. All you do is play toys with them, no problems. Then I can have whatever I want. So the genie poof, transports the lawyer into a kindergarten. Now, of course, the lawyer has all of the children. Nah, 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 and the lawyer can't handle it. And after two hours, he quits. Game over. Next is the carpenter. The carpenter says, hmm, I know. I think I will be a waiter. It's easy to be a waiter. You just carry some drinks and take orders. No problems. So, poof. The, the genie transport him, transports him to, to be a waiter in a busy restaurant and people are shouting orders at him and I want Coca-Cola and I want chips and you got my order wrong and can you cook this? And after, after two hours he quits. Can't take the pressure. And finally it's the janitor's turn and the janitor says, I'd like to be an artist. And <laughs> so the genie says, okay, he transports him into the art studio. And so the janitor sits down and he paints this incredible painting with, with acrylics and, and then he, he, he goes onto a website and he sells the painting for a hundred million dollars. And the genie says, my God, that's amazing. How did you do that? And the janitor says, it was easy. I, I have a degree in fine arts. <laughs> because, 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 you know, People with degrees in arts, it's very difficult to find a job. Oh. I'm sorry if you have a degree in arts, but I'm sure that you'll, you'll understand. You'll probably think it's funny. Um, there's, there's lots of jokes like that about so-called worthless degrees, right? Soft degrees. Mm. Well, that's another subject. Okay, so let's move, on to, let's move on to some pronunciation. So I want to start with Russians. And Russians is great because it includes a lot of other... Um, languages. So, for example, Belarusian, uh, Ukrainian would also be in, in, in this kind of, um, in this category. Now, one really important uh, thing is that in Russian, in general, all of the vowels are monophthongs. They're like one flat sound. Ah, uh, ooh, e one flat sound. But obviously in English, we have these diphthongs, these vowels which move. And so it's really important for you to practice those. And just, just as a quick example, you know, practicing the difference between, you know, uh, sit and seat, which is sounds that we looked at in the previous, in the previous Daily Digest. Short and long, monophthong, diphthong, like one sound, e, e, e. moving sound, e. Okay, sit, seat, and but but that's not really what I what I want to talk about. I want to talk about actually the most common sound in all of English, which is the schwa. The schwa is the zombie sound. 
I call it the zombie sound because it sounds exactly like a zombie, like somebody with their brain removed. And you make this sound by totally relaxing all of your muscles, your jaw, just blah, blah, and just make your voice activate. Uh, uh. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that zombie sound is the most common sound in English. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> and, and I know that a lot of Russian speakers have problems with this sound, especially the long schwa, which goes a bit like this, right? Uh, 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 like, a, like, a little, like a little excited zombie. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay, so this word, bit of a nightmare. Starts with the ooh, starts with the ooh, okay, the kissing, the kissing, kiss your finger, ooh. Starts with the kissing, we move into the zombie, and then we come here. Worm. Worm. Okay, and now, now here, here's something really interesting to note, so, in most of the British English dialects, we don't pronounce the R in this position, okay? So the R kind of disappears, it becomes part of the next sound, okay? But in, in American English, you would produce your R, okay? And this, this, of course, influences this sound. It affects this sound. So in British English, this would be worm. Worm. But in American English, because I need to produce the R, it affects this a bit. Wur. So as the diphthong, as this O finishes, I transition to my er. It affects the sound. Worm. Worm. And so the question, should you pronounce the, the R or not? It depends on, on your native language. So, for example, I know for Spanish speakers, it's easier for them to produce the R because they always produce the R in, in Spanish. So, go with it. If, if you feel more comfortable, you want to say worm. If not, then feel free to omit it. Okay, so that's Russians. Um, now, let's look at another favorite of mine. Let's look at... Um, Polish. Uh, no, sorry, not Polish. Greek. Ay, ay, ay. Greek. And again, this is about voicing. Okay, so now the Greek alphabet is almost completely phonetic. So you, what you read, you pronounce. But, you know, English isn't like that. So you have to adjust your expectations. So that's that's a process which takes time obviously. So let's have a look at this. Now here we have this beautiful this beautiful sound in English the shh 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 okay and obviously we have two versions of that we have unvoiced shh okay we can we can hear our like this shh Okay, no voice. And then we can activate our voice and produce the zh. Same mouth position, voice activated. Zh. Two very important sounds in English. Now, if you speak Greek or, uh, um, or maybe if you, even if you live in Cyprus, if you're a Cypriot, then you may say instead of shirt, you might say ser. I'm wearing a cert, but it's a very, this, this is not good because it can cause problems with understanding, okay? Um, and then we have the jur, the jur sound, the voiced sound, the voiced j in a word here, okay? Garage, garage, okay? Not garaz. Garaz, garage, totally different mouth position. So, some sounds to look out for. So, I'm looking forward to talking about some different and exciting new research that I've been reading tomorrow in tomorrow's Daily Digest. 
I hope you have a fantastic day. I'm Christian, this is Kangaroo English, and I'll see you in class.